With over a thousand species and even more hybrids, begonias are a diverse group of plants. They can be grown for the flowers and many varieties are also grown for the wonderful colourful foliage. Some of the more commonly grown groups include the Rex begonias, cane begonias, tuberous, rhizomatous and the dragon wing begonias. You can grow begonias in containers or grow them in the garden depending on the variety and the climate. In this video, Craig Wilson from Jetty Arden Nursery shows some specimen or display plants and then takes us to see some of the many varieties he has in propagation. There's Begonia Irene Nuss, which is a, a very old cane and a, quite a common one for good reason. It's a strong grower. And the one next to it, different is foliage. Different foliage, Diadema, also a cane. Haven't seen it flower, but doesn't really need to with foliage like that. And you've got these growing in containers? I have, yeah. Repot them often? Uh, no, they don't need to be repotted. They don't mind being pot bound as long as you feed them. And you feed these with? Um, slow release fertiliser, liquid fertiliser when I water them. Maybe some foliar feed. And do you cut them back at all? If you need to, if they get leggy. And what about light for these begonias? Oh, uh, they like some sun, morning sun, but not hot afternoon sun. Is that the same for most of the begonias? Yep, in my experience it is. This is I think this is a spectacular plant. I mean, great It's a species, yeah. A species. Yeah. Great flowers yeah. and really interesting foliage as well. Yeah, and a strong grower. It's begonia shafii. And it'll grow in a Melbourne garden easily. And With no frost, obviously. And the reverse of the leaves is a sort of brilliant colour. Yeah. And even the stems have got colour in them as well. That's right. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? So sharpie eye. Yeah. So you could grow this in the garden in a protected position? Absolutely, it'll flourish. Quite okay. dry too, they don't need a lot of water. Again, a bit of morning sun? Yep, if you can give it that. Only a grandis, which is a tuber, so it disappears completely over the winter. Brilliant flowers with all of those, not only the flowers, but the flower stems are... That's right, yeah. It's sort of iridescent pink, isn't yep. it? Yeah, and it'll grow in, a, in the garden too, quite easily. So the name again for this one? Grandis. We're in the polytunnel having a look at a few... Uh, stock plants. The stock plants. And these are all rhizome type begonias? They are. So they, a lot of them go down in the winter and um, they flower in spring and the flowering is way above the foliage, generally pink. So do you want names on them? Yeah. The so one, that's Veer Bob. This one here? V-I-R-B-O-B. -B. And next to it we have? Bowery. That one's Cleopatra. And you've got these growing in troughs? Yeah, little um, terracotta pot trays or whatever, I don't know what that one's called. I bought that as Taiwan Ants, but I don't think it is, so it's got a question mark on it. And that one's got a question mark on it. And this one here? That, that's a Rex, so it's called Freckles. There are hundreds of Rexes, but they look, the main thing is you keep them dry. And that's uh, Erythrophila, so it's a common one, the beefsteak begonia. And this one's stained glass window. Okay, so it's got that wonderful red sort of reverse on the foliage again. That's right, yeah. The cane type begonia. The, the name's Lady Diane. It looks to me like it's going to be a big one. And next to it? Black Magic, which is another cane. And again, sort of that red on the foliage as well. Oh yeah, and, and silver, the silver spotting. This little one here. High gloss. And I suspect, again, it's going to be a big cane. That's Bonanza, for those of you brought up in the 60s. <laughs> I can remember the show. I can't remember the song, which could be a good thing. That's Black Beauty. This one here's got rather spectacular forms. Yeah, that's the fashion one, Maculata Whitey Eye. This one I like. I think it's going to be a good one. Lady Claire. Nice foliage. 
Yes, it's sort of quite heavily divided. Isn't yeah. It? And behind it? And behind it we've got Fremantle. And one step backwards? Oh, I don't know. Silly pink one. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fair enough too. Yeah. There's a species here, Begonia matriciana. And this is a species? It's a species, as is the one next to it, which is Albo picta, this here. And this one in the foreground here? Uh, Agentio guttata. And again, it's got really nice foliage. Lots of spotting, yeah. Dragon's wing, it's a garden one for sure. Make huge clumps. So you think you think this is dragon's wing? I think so. I, I, I got a cutting out of the garden I was looking at. Oh, that's Polonaise. So that's an Australian hybrid bred by Bernard York in Queensland. Really large foliage. And big, sort of big leaves and seemingly easy to grow. Uh, species, Boliviense. Right, so this is sort of... This is what all these, these florally things next to it are bred from. That's... Um, Sophie, Sophie Cecile, Nochmus, uh, Grandis, I think, so that'll be a species. And this one up here? That one is Nocturne. I think that's another Bernard York one. But quite nice foliage, really, yeah. isn't it? That's Little Brother Montgomery. Okay, of Common as an old rag, but for good reason. But uh, yeah, it's a nice plant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, easy. And we've looked at this one, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, that's Nochmus. There's a few rhizomes in there. I haven't learnt them all yet. But so these ones are only babies. You know, they've got a lot of growing to do. So Sizemore. This is Sizemore. I think so. It's got a label in it, hasn't it? It, uh, it has, yeah. That's quite an interesting plant. I'd... And the one behind it's a cordex. Okay, so that will form a big... A cordex, yeah. And it's got a name on it too. Draggy eye. So that's the species. And I suspect that'll get a lot bigger. It's got a name. Sarsbella. Yeah, that's it. So that's Begonia nanus. Manus with an M. Manus. Yeah, it's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah, it's got nice foliage, a touch yeah. of purple in there. The one in front of it looks like it's going to be very special. Christobalensis. Christobalensis. Coral West. So Which, it looks like a garden one to me. Begonia Coral West. Yeah. And this one looks like a species. Ubriki eye, ubriki, ubriki, begonia, ubriki. So, with the begonias, as a general rule, are we thinking light, filtered light, yep. to, to low light? Light shade. Watering them? Um, they, they let them dry right out between watering. So, you soak them and then you leave them for maybe two or three weeks, depending on where you live and what the climate is. So rather than overhead water, you dunk them into a bucket? I just use a hose. You, you, you water them with a hose? Yeah. Yep. But that's because I've got a lot to water. <laughs> that's true. So you've got to dry them out between watering. And fertilising? Yep, feed them every time you water them and when they're growing. So you'd use a liquid type yep. fertiliser? Yep and repotting? They, they, they don't need to be in great big pots. They're, as long as they're fed and watered, they're fine being pot bound. So it's really wait to them to outgrow the pot before you pot yep, them up. That's right. And of course, you're always using a good quality potting mix, I yep, guess. Yeah, premium potting mix. So there's no real shortcuts on that. Uh, Did we look at this one? Uh, it's got a name on it. It's it's a species, isn't it? Masui. Mossiae. Moisesii. Moisesii. Begonia Moisesii. And again. Species. Yeah. Yeah. Attractive foliage. Yeah. And I reckon it'll get huge if I can keep it. 
So some of these are easier to grow than others? Oh, absolutely. But that's with all genus. So the di more difficult ones are the ones that would probably be more tropical that's right. environment. Yeah. Look, I'm right on the edge of their range here, I reckon. Any cooler than here and you wouldn't have a hope. So the main thing in the winter, if you're living in a cool climate, is to keep them dry. Cold and dry is okay. Cold and wet is death. This is Begonia angularis, so it's a species, and it's capable of getting up to three metres. So, you know, it can be a big plant and a good garden plant. And again, morning sun. Yep, give it a chop when, when it gets too leggy. And next to it we have... And that's uh, Begonia anita, which doesn't make any wood for me to propagate from. So it might be just for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's... It's just slow growing, is it? Yeah, it doesn't seem to branch. And there's but, two plants in that pot. But it's got really lovely foliage. It has. Yeah. Dale Kramer. And look, I cut the hell out of it to get cuttings, but it looks like it's going to be a beauty. The leaves will get twice that size. Begonia echinocephala, so it's a species. And very soon it'll have white flowers and it holds them way above the foliage. It's a very handsome plant. And I reckon a good garden plant. Have we done this one? Argentio guttata, I think we have. Begonia John Tonkin. It's another cane. It looks to me like it's going to be a really big one. Certainly got large foliage. It's beautiful foliage. Begonia listata. So it's a small shrub-like begonia. And brilliant foliage. Yeah. That lime green splash right down the middle. That's right. Easy to grow? Seemingly so. There'll be a list of the begonias mentioned in this video in the notes below the video itself. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of gardening plants, including more on begonias. And as always, good luck with your gardening. <laughs>